Did you ever know that hackers use PowerShell to gain deeper access and run malicious scripts on victims devices? Well, today we're going to talk about some PowerShell commands that are crucial for every security analyst to know. The thing is, these commands are all legitimate that unfortunately won't trigger any alerts in your EDR tool or security system by themselves. By understanding these commands and setting up the right triggers or alerting in your system, you'll be better equipped to spot when something is not right. Someone could be trying to gain persistence in your network or perform lateral movement to get more visibility and access in your network. So if you want to learn about these commands and learn how hackers could exploit them, make sure to watch this video till the end. Hello everyone, if you're new here to my channel, my name is Sohail and I'm a cybersecurity consultant and engineer with over a 10 years of experience in the IT industry. Here in this channel, I share what I have learned and I will try my best to help you become the cyber hero you were meant to be. So if you want to stay updated with my future videos, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. So what is PowerShell? PowerShell is a powerful scripting and command line tool that was created on .NET framework. It was specifically designed for system administration on Windows systems. The system administrators use this tool to automate some boring tasks, manage system and configure uh, system settings on Windows machines. Unfortunately, in the hands of a hacker, this could become one of the most powerful tool helping them exploiting systems, escalating privileges, and conducting sophisticated lateral movement within a network. By understanding these commands and scripts that attackers use, you can make sure that you are secure against these uh, threats in future. You might be asking yourself how hackers uh, take advantage of this tool. The way it's going to work that it, once an attacker gains initial access to a system, PowerShell can become their gateway to get uh, a deeper access and visibility into the network. With PowerShell, the thing is it's available on every available Windows machines and it's really powerful tool that you can manage uh, running scripts on these machines or changing their system settings. This makes it a favorite tool amongst uh, cyber criminals because it allows them to run scripts, malwares, harvesting credentials, or it allows them to even move laterally within the network without installing any software or any tool that might trigger uh, antivirus detection or EDR tools. With that groundwork laid, let's jump into our Windows 10 environment and get our hands dirty with some command line action. All right, guys, as you can see, I have a RDP session to a Windows 10 machine in my Azure Cloud uh, instance. I have PowerShell open in front of me. The way you can open PowerShell is just click on start and and search for PowerShell, right click on that and run as administrator. So once you do that, you'll have PowerShell command line in front of you. First, we're going to get started with get hyphen child item and we're going to give it the location as well. This command uh, lists all user directories, including hidden ones, which might seem harmless, but in the hands of a hacker, this command is a starting point to scout for potential high value target or sensitive data locations. Once inside, they could do anything guys, they could use this to identify directories for further exploitation like placing malware or extracting confidential files so let's actually go through the command together i just going to copy that and uh, copy yep and paste it here see as soon as i do that you will see the list of all the directories the name of them and you might be asking yourself okay why this command is structured like that the thing is with powershell you need to learn the syntax like there are so many books written about the syntax and how you can learn this but we're just going to touch on some of the basic commands here in this video training but let's say if i go ahead and remove the last part i'm going to get more details like you see i'm going to get the mode last right time like when was the last time this folder was edited you know and the length and the name right now i'm just in only interested in the name that that's why we use that pipe and, and filter command. That's only going to show us the name. All right, moving on to PowerShell history. With commands like save nothing, users can manage what gets uh, logged. All right, while these might be used innocently to manage, I guess, uh, log sizes, hackers use this to erase their tracks. They use it to disable logging. So they leave fewer, I guess, clues behind, making it harder for security team to trace their steps and understand their methods. So if I come in here, my PowerShell and type in get history, uh, you see that we have all these commands that I've typed in my last session with PowerShell. When you do that, I mean, you can see obviously what other people are doing on the system with PowerShell. 
special. Hackers do that as well. Like they go and do all the sorts of stuff. They execute malware. They download files through PowerShell and all of that. But they don't want to leave that trace behind. So what they do before they start their session, they're going to type in save nothing. That's it. Oops. I typed in the wrong command. Wrong command, guys. I'm going to copy and paste the right one. Yep. Copy. Paste. That's it. From now on, it's not going to save the history here. Okay. I'm also going to list all these commands in the comment section on my YouTube channel. So don't worry about these commands. You'll get the access to that. Then once it's done, we now can move to the next one. Uh, next, we have start service, stop process and service and uh, things like that. These commands allow you to manage what services and processes are running. A hacker might misuse these to stop security services, disabling your defenses, let's say your antivirus, EDR tool and things like that, or actually start a malicious service as part of the persistent mechanism. They can also terminate processes that might be monitoring or logging their activities. So if I go ahead and type in, let's say, get service, I'm going to get the list of all the services on my Windows machine. There is one of way to do that like this through command line. And if you go ahead and search it in your start, type in services, that way you can also see the list of services. But hackers, once they have that shell access to your machine, right, they just use command line and all of that they can see the list of all the services including hidden ones all right that's one way you can actually add this command with something like this i'm going to copy and paste it here copy paste now it's only going to show the running services on that machine a specific host this is really great guys so they can actually go ahead and have a look and see what type of applications uh, are being uh, are running on the machine what they can do what are the services uh, that they can stop apart from that we have another command called get process so services is different than process what do i mean by processes if you click on your task manager you're going to list and uh, see the list of all the processes on your host machine this is another way hackers they can actually go ahead and terminate a specific process let's say they, they can go ahead and disable antiviruses your edr tools or things like that now why am i talking about these things you can put in alerts triggers in your edr tools or sim tools like splunk and as soon as they see these commands on a normal user machine it's going to trigger that alert so you can investigate it because let's face it guys do you believe that someone let's say in a hr department or accountant is going to use powershell and run these commands i guess not they're not going to do that. Like this tool is specific for IT professionals, not accountant or things like that. So you can actually uh, create alerting system in your SIEM tool. As soon as someone enter this command in a PowerShell tool, you'll get notified. That's the way to defend against these threats, I guess. Now, next one, we will talk about, I think, invoke web request. Invoke web request is a critical, I think, tool for interacting with the internet directly from your PowerShell session. This can be as simple as downloading a file or as malicious as downloading a malware or exfiltrating data. Hackers often use this command because it allows them to interact with remote servers without needing a web browser. Let's actually go that and do that together. So this is the command that I'm talking about, invoke. And now you see, if I click on tab on my keyboard, it's going to autocomplete it. So that's another great feature of PowerShell. So let's say I am using this command and I want to get something from google.com. You see, as soon as they do that, it says the status code is 200. I was able to fetch the information, the images and all of that from Google. Typical web traffic, but it's not through browser or curl command. It's actually through PowerShell. Now, hackers, they can actually include something else in the URL, not Google, a server that they own a location where they have actually hosted their malicious malware or content so let's say i'm going to type in malware.com something like that now i'm not going to get anything but you see you can actually again create a trigger or alerting system in your system and that's going to notify you as soon as someone runs this command in your environment hope that makes sense and lastly understanding who has access to what is fundamental guys i'm going to talk about another command it's called get hyphen local group let's actually go and do that together get hyphen local group when you type that in you'll see the list of the local group that is available in your system we have some some of them are built in by default like you see it's user we have users we have guests this is the interesting one administrator so in this case the hacker is looking to get the local groups and 
they are only interested uh not only like sometimes most of the times they're interested to see what are the users that are part of this group okay i'm actually can make this cleaner as well by using this command get local group i'm going to use pipe and filter it based on the name only this is useful for sp spotting administrative groups that are prime targets for privilege escalation and i can actually go ahead and use another command called get local group member administrators when i do that when i use that command let's Let's do it together actually here copy paste you'll see it's telling me there are two users part of the administrators group which is interesting test user i'm not sure if i created that myself but i know for a fact that this user is part of the administrators because that's the same account i'm using right now in this machine and it says the source is local it's not from any other where anywhere else it's locally created administrator account and it allows the hacker sees uh, who is an administrator all right there is another command that i can use in conjunction with this called get local user all right and i can use different filters and pipe to actually get when was the last time this user logged on to the service to the system okay this is the command get hyphen local user uh, pipe ft name enabled last log on when you click on that it's going to tell okay cyber excel enabled yes true and the last logon time was this time all right the other two accounts are disabled default account i guess is default disabled but test user is enabled i'm not sure what that account is to be honest i'm actually going to remove that account just to be safe you see you can again create triggers and alerting in your tools and systems to get notified as soon as someone use a power uses a powershell and with these commands because like i said non-it per professional people they cannot do these kind of things hope that makes sense our final act let's simulate how an encoded script could look like and see how our edr tool uh, crowdstrike uh, catches it and we're going to actually use a base 64 encoded command entirely i mean not harmless it's actually tied to a cyber threat cyber threat actor group out there on the internet and this script is going to try to download a file a malicious file into our system and execute it to do other stuff I'm going to actually copy and paste the whole script and you'll see what will happen actually. So copy, paste, don't try it at home guys. This was the command that we used. Uh, don't do it at home and uh, we don't want to do that. Now, when I do that immediately, like it's actually nothing is going to happen because of that. When I go back to my CrowdStrike dashboard, actually, you see these are the most recent detections that we have right now. Let's actually go to the de detection section. This is the last one. I think this is some file five minutes ago let's click on that okay i'm going to go to the details view so you see powershell exit on windows 10 by cyber excel so this is the powershell session that i had on this windows machine and my edr tool actually has detected everything and it's telling me these commands were blocked and what was the reason like this is the mitre attack framework it says that the tactic is execution and the technique is powershell all right okay these are the G dns requests that were that were made at that time malware.com you <laughs> see this is here as well oh these are the group these are the commands get local group ft name principal all of that so from edr's perspective all these commands that we use they were suspicious that's why it was uh, they were blocked and this is the last command that i ran the script it says he, it says it all here they were all blocked by crowdstrike all of it so if you click on that it gives you all the detail all right guys that wraps up our exploration on powershell tool for security analysts we covered a lot today we talked about what powershell tool is and how it can be used and misused by cyber criminals remember the best way to defend uh, against cyber threats is to understand these tools that hackers use if you enjoyed this type of content make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel and if you have any other questions or any request about what kind of topic or content you want me to create make sure to uh, leave your comment down below see you in the next video